Hi everyone and welcome back to the sixth video in our eBay API with Python tutorial. In this video we're going to wrap everyone, everything up. This is the last one. So we've got our code where we send emails to ourselves after looking through the items and finding items that match our criteria. And so the way we've been doing this now is we just plug in our search and then we plug in our target price and it filters based on those criteria. But what I'm going to show is using some of eBay's built-in logic, we can get rid of lots of things we don't want. So right now, if we look over at our search file, we're looking at the E5 2670v2. That's a Xeon server processor, and we're looking for it under let's say $200. I'm going to show you the eBay search for that item and I'm going to show you some of the filtering we're going to do. And so if you look at this, we're looking for the actual processor, but what shows up are these clamshells and then here's a bunch of engineering sample, another engineering sample, another engineering sample, and you might get spammy stuff like this where it's actually meant for many different products. So it might be like if you're looking for an iPhone, a bunch of phone cases that just say iPhone 7, iPhone 8, iPhone 7S or whatever, whatever version, it might just be all spammed in the title. So it shows up for the search, but it's not something you're interested in. So I'm going to show how we use this logic. The one we're focused on right now is going to be the minus operator. So they show that you can do baseball minus and then a bunch of words in parentheses like autograph, card, and star, and it's going to look for baseball and it's going to exclude any searches that include autograph, card, or star. So for us, we're going to try and um, sort out any words that have clam or es in them. And so we'll go over here and we're going to add to our searches and we're going to do minus and I'll do ES ES I don't know if they do capitalization I'll just throw in both because it's not very much work and then I'll also do clam because we don't want those little clamshell things and I'm gonna get rid of the rest of these for now just so we can focus on those searches and so I'm gonna save that and we go over here and if you remember, the way we were doing this before is we split on the commas. So the first split is going to be the search. The second split is going to be the max price. So if you look at this, the first split is this, and then the second split is the 200. And then we're going to add a, a third split, and we're going to call this negative. And so we do just like the same thing as the previous ones. But for this one, you're going to notice we have some issue. We have additional commas in here. So if we just do two, then what the comma is going to return is from here to this next comma. So it's just going to be minus open parentheses ES, and it's not going to include the rest of this. And so what we're going to do is we will do a colon so that we can include all of these points after that. And then what we have to do over here is we add to the end of our request and we have to do a space in between the, um, the positive search and the negative search we're adding. So we add in our quotes with a space in between and then we're going to add in our negative which is the entire operation we need. It's going to be the minus, all of this stuff in parentheses, and the close parentheses. So right now we should basically have all of the code we need in order to run through this and filter in the way that we're looking for. And one additional thing I'm going to do is go in here and clear out our previous previously alerted items. 
And also I will print out parsed doc just so we can take a little bit deeper look into what is actually being returned to us. And so I will hit control B, fingers crossed it works. List object to string, can't convert, okay. So right now what we have is this negative is a list. We're pulling it from over here and it's going to pull out ES, ES and clam and those are all going to be within a list and so what it's saying down here is it can't convert the list to a string which is the uh, the kind of format we need to add it to the rest of this string and so what we do is we do that explicitly it says it can't do it implicitly but we can explicitly say turn this into a string and then it takes the list and it turns all of the items into strings and it just puts it all together so now we can try again hopefully with no errors maybe another error key error item and so we see right here actually the issue is it returned zero counts and so what I will try is I will try to increase the price. Let's increase it to 2000 just to make sure. And there we go. This time it got a bunch of items because that price is ridiculously high. But you can see it returned all of this and then we can look at our email and we can see the current time is 9.04 and it returned a bunch of emails for all of the different items that popped up. And you'll notice that none of them have ES and none of them have um, clam in them. So that's something good to know. So now that we have all of this working like we expect, it's filtering how we want. We can add additional negative filters so we remove items we don't want and we can if we start getting spammed by something we can just add new negative words in or we can change the price or we can we can use some sort of method to improve our search so we aren't getting spammed by items we don't want then we're going to move on and we're gonna actually push this out to production we've got all the stuff we want set up and then what we want to do is we want to actually run it in the background and make it run continuously. So we can't have it run all the time, 24 seven, just constantly as fast as possible because eBay limits us to X number of searches per 24 hours. I don't know the exact number off the top of my head, but you can't just be spamming them. So we have to limit it in some way. So what we're going to try to do is we try to make it run every 15 minutes so we can just kind of meter it out. And so what we're going to use is Task Scheduler. This is a built-in thing within Windows. If you're using Linux, you can just use CronTab or something like that. That is also a valid way to do it. I have a tutorial on that using an AWS instance, but it applies to any Linux distribution you should be able to do it there but anyway if you're using Windows you can use task scheduler and what we do here is we open up task scheduler you just saw me put it in the search bar and then open it up and then we do create task and so I will name this eBay API and then we've got lots of options here we're just gonna ignore that for now and then we have to determine what is going to trigger this and so we can do it on a schedule. But what I actually am going to do is I'm going to do it on idle. Because what this is going to do is it's going to, well, if we do it on schedule, then every 15 minutes or whatever, it's going to open up a command prompt on top of whatever you're doing. And it's going to start running that Python script in a command prompt. And that's kind of cumbersome. And so I'm only going to run it when I'm idle. So when I'm away from the computer, it's going to run in the background and it's not going to bother anything. And then as soon as I get back to my computer, it'll just shut off and go away. And so now that we've checked on idle, 
we can repeat the task every 15 minutes like we want and we can set it to only run for however long we want I'm gonna do indefinitely so it just continuously runs no matter what and then the rest of the options we don't need to touch for now and then we go to actions and what this is going to do is we need to open up our Python this is going to be your actual like core Python install so you go to wherever you installed Python and you just find this file called Python and then we open that and then our argument we're gonna pass through is the location of our file so for me what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all of these files eBay tutorial 6 item ID and searches and I'm going to copy and paste to my Python directory just for simplicity because I don't want to have to deal with other entirely different paths and I just want to make sure they're all in the same area so then I paste that there and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the spaces out of this just for simplicity as well you can have a file with spaces in it but you have to do a little bit of formatting and stuff when you're actually on task scheduler so I'm gonna avoid that by just removing the spaces on the file name and so what I do is I'm going to copy the pa the path from the Python file because that's that's the directory where all of our files are in now and I'm going to type in eBay tutorial 6.py and what that should do is it should open our script and run it successfully and so this is our entire path I put it inside of quotes I can't remember if you have to do that but I'm gonna do it just because I think you do I'm not positive positive. and then I hit OK and there's more tabs you can do conditions and settings but I don't I don't think we really need those for now you can look into those if you want and then I'm going to hit OK and then it should run in the background if we just go idle for a little bit but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just run this and you can see it opens up for a second and it runs I think that aired out for some reason but that's related to Python actually so let me poke around in this and see if I can get this to work So I'm just putting in a time.sleep to see if the window will stay open because right now it's just opening and closing super fast. And so I will go over here and I'll run this again and we'll see if it'll open. So yeah, it's running just fine. It's working exactly how we want. We just need to figure out what error is actually popping up and causing this to fail. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to inject the time.sleep in different places until it's after where it failed because it closes too fast for us to figure it out. Actually, let's just try and run this on its own. Maybe, maybe it's working actually because this is closing really fast too. It's doing it in 1.1 seconds. I I am under the belief that's working. If you guys tried this out and it's not working for you, let me know and I will poke around and try and figure this out, but I believe it's working now. I won't be able to know until I go idle for a little bit and I see if I continue getting emails or not. But other than that, that should be it for this tutorial. I hope you've learned something. Um, we've covered a lot. We've covered requests, sending emails, working with eBay's API, doing some filtering, working with JSON. Overall, pretty decent project. It's pretty useful too. I've used this for a while with um, just alerting me when there's items that are cheap and it's pretty useful. But other than that, that's it. Thank you for watching.